Hi again, welcome back to the crash course in the autoimmune disease machine learning challenge. In this lecture, we're going to cover technology. Uh, but before that, let's just briefly recap what you learned in the first lecture. So in the first lecture, we had an introduction to autoimmune disease, and we learned about ulcerative colitis and how pathologists study uh, ulcerative colitis tissues. And then we finally learned that patients with ul ulcerative colitis have increased risk for colorectal cancer. Now, one of the things that these pathology images don't really tell us is the mechanism of the disease or how the disease might progress, what's the chance that a patient might uh, progress to cancer. So we need other technologies to really get at these questions, and that's what the focus of this lecture will be. So technology. So we're going to really focus on one aspect of the cell and the tissue that we can measure, which is gene expression. So first, I'm going to review with you what genes are and how gene expression changes in health, disease, and cancer. And then I'll introduce to you how we can measure gene expression in tissues and in cells. So let's get started by uh, talking about genes. So, uh, you know, genes are the basic unit of inheritance uh, or heredity. Uh, they are inherited from our parents, uh, and so we have them from our mom and our dad. Uh, genes are written in DNA sequences using the bases A, T, C, and G. In here is uh, DNA, and it forms this beautiful double helix structure. And so genes are written in the DNA, and this is used to write out uh, both physical and biological traits. So genes can encode things like our height or our eye color, but variants in these genes can also increase or decrease our risk for certain diseases. So we know there are certain variants in genes that increase our risk for ulcerative colitis. So, uh, you know, genes are, as I said, are written in the DNA, and then information in the DNA or in the, in the genes flows from the DNA to the RNA to the protein. So DNA is sitting in the nucleus of our cells, and then it gets copied or transcribed into an RNA molecule, and then that RNA molecule gets translated into a protein. And a protein is a biomolecule that can carry out many functions in cells and tissues. It gives cells structure. It's important for interactions between cells. It's, they're doing almost everything. Uh, they're pretty amazing. So, Let's take a look at how this plays out in tissues. So here we're looking at four different tissue types, and each of them is made up of different uh, cells. Here we have the skin, the brain, the small intestine, and the blood. Uh, there are two really, I think, amazing things about these images when you look at them. One is just the diversity. So you know, the skin is protecting us from our outside environment. The brain is doing all our thinking and memory. Hopefully you're using it as you listen to me. Um, the small intestine is where our food is traveling down and nutrients are getting absorbed. And finally, we have blood vessels where uh, immune cells and red blood cells carrying oxygen move throughout the body. So that's really incredible. All of this is happening in our body. There's huge diversity. But what's even more remarkable is that each of these cells that make up these tissues have essentially the exact same DNA sequence. So that's really incredible. So how does that work? So essentially what's going on is that within every cell, there's regulation of which genes are being expressed. So which genes are being turned on or off. So in the human genome, we have all of us 20,000 genes, but they're not all on at the same time. There's specificity to which cells they're on in. So remember, DNA is transcribed or copied into RNA, and this uh, control of this is what regulates which genes are on or off in any given cell. So let's look at a cartoon of what's going on here. So here we have gene expression or genes, and then here we have different cell types. And red means that this gene is expressed in that cell type. So within the B cells, we have a certain group of genes being expressed or turned on. Within T cells, we have a different set of genes being turned on or off. And then finally, in the muscle cells, we have another set of genes that are turned on. And again, there are 20,000 genes. They're not all on at once. It's just subsets of genes. So these groups of genes that are expressed together, we often refer to them as gene expression programs. And we can discover these gene expression programs by taking cells and measuring the expression of the genes inside the cells. 
So to do that, we really need to focus on the RNA. So when RNA is made, that means a gene is being expressed. And we call these RNA molecules that are made transcripts or gene transcripts. So during disease, there's a big change in these gene expression programs, so these groups of genes that are regulated together. So here we're returning to our cartoon of the colon epithelial barrier. And in healthy colon, there are many gene expression programs that are turned on that serve to keep the tissue in homeostasis, so in this healthy balance. And some of these programs are things that are uh, genes that are involved in nutrient absorption, so our gut is taking in nutrients from the food that's being digested. There's also programs involved in microbe defense, so we don't want these microbes to really be crossing over. However, in ulcerative colitis, as you start damaging the colon epithelial barrier and microbes start migrating into the colon, you get gene expression programs that are involved in epithelial barrier dysfunction. So these cells are under a lot of stress as the microbes make their way in. You start to see uh, programs involved in microbe sensing. So the cells are sensing, hey, there's a bacteria here that doesn't belong. And then you also start to get this early immune response with inflammation that progresses to chronic inflammation. So again, all of this is controlled by gene expression programs. The same holds true in cancer. So as uh, a healthy colon transitions over to dysplasia and to cancer, you also get these gene expression programs that are turned on. So remember, cancer is sort of one defining feature is this uncontrolled growth. So you see the program for cell division being turned on as the cancer grows and grows. You also see a program called epithelial to mesenchymal transition, which is these epithelial cells start to detach from the tissue and migrate throughout the body to another site. And that's called uh, metastasis. And that's really uh, bad for the patient and requires a lot of intervention, obviously. So at this point, we've introduced two different ways to profile uh, tissues in humans. One is tissue pathology, where we stain a piece of tissue with this H&E stain. And the other is measuring gene expression, where we are measuring the expression of all 20,000 genes inside a cell or inside a tissue. So let's compare and contrast these two different approaches to profiling tissues. So with tissue pathology, uh, a pathologist can immediately see after seeing the uh, tissue, the spatial organization of the tissue. Uh, they can make a diagnosis, whether they think the patient has ulcerative colitis. They can make a prediction as to how the disease might progress, potentially. Uh, they can uh, come up with, you know, what's the treatment strategy. So these are all really important things with patient care. At the same time, uh, these pathology images, there's many of them available across hospitals in the world. So there's millions of these images likely, and they are cheap and routine to collect. On the downside, um, you know, just looking at these images alone, uh, they do not tell us how the disease arises, and they do not tell us how the disease may progress to cancer, like what are the pathways that could happen. And because of this, we also don't know how to target these diseases or cancer with a drug because we don't know the pathways and we don't know what's going wrong, so we don't know what, what to fix or where to intervene. And again, this is probably because, in a sense, these tissue images are somewhat low information. They're low dimension, it's just three channels, a red, green, blue image. So the gene expression, on the other hand, is a high dimensional measurement. We're measuring 20,000 genes. And when we do that, we can really look at which genes are associated with disease, uh, which pathways are being turned on. And this can give us an idea of pathways or parts of the cell to be targeting with a drug. So that's really in, uh, just important for discovery. Now the downside of this is that gene expression is actually technically quite hard to measure, and it takes a lot more money and time. Uh, and the technologies to do this are becoming really advanced. And in this challenge or these crunches, we're going to be working with some of the newest technologies, but also conversely, they're the most expensive technologies. So the premise of this autoimmune disease machine learning challenge is what if you could combine these two technologies and kind of get the best of both worlds? So can we train machine learning models that will connect the tissue pathology to the gene expression? And so now we're really taking advantage of both technologies. And then if we can train these models that can take in tissue pathology and tell us something about gene expression, can we apply such models to do a better job at detecting cancer earlier in ulcerative colitis when a pathologist is studying those tissue sections? Mm -hmm.